All right, welcome back to the channel. I'm King of Bad, and in today's video, we're back playing Inscription. So, I don't even know. I don't think anyone saw it for real, but I did release one video of this game, but I want to restart it. And I don't know. I think for this first episode, I will. Yeah, I'm going to fully restart, like play through it and everything. But I want to break up the episodes a little bit differently. So, we'll figure it all out. But don't forget to like the video and subscribe. All that stuff helps me grow the channel. Hopefully, y'all enjoy Inscription because I don't know. It's pretty cool so far. It's a nice little roguelike RPG card playing game. And it's very weird overall, especially like you can see with this. I don't even know what it is. Eyes opening up. Another challenger. It has been ages. Perhaps you have forgotten how the game is played. Allow me to remind you. All right. Play the squirrel the card. Squirrel card? Okay. Now play the stout. Now the stout. Stout costs one blood, an honorable sacrifice. Wolves require two sacrifices. Okay, so enough. I can't put a wolf down there? What the end your turn and commence combat. Your stout stands unopposed. The number on the bottom left is the attack. Right? Your stout dealt one damage, added it to the scale. You win if you tip my side all the way down. Right, so we just have to tip it all the way over to his side. Kind of like a scale, but like this. I wonder if there's an ability where I can just poke, <laughs> just poke his side down so he loses. Your stout stands in the way of my coyote. My stout dealt two damage to your stout. That means your stout's health is too less. If a creature's health reaches zero, it dies. Okay, that's not. I mean, that kind of just makes sense. Again. That's pretty straightforward. You may draw one draw uh, from your deck, or you I'll may draw, draw a squirrel. A squirrel card. How dull. How dull. Let me put a wolf down, so that should be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, fuck that stout. Because you are learning, I will pass. Again, the choice, a random card from your deck or a certain... I guess you lose this either way, because the first time I showed it on the channel, I played through... I took the, the card, monster card first before I took the squirrel. Let me recall your story. Oh, yes. You were lost deep in the forest. A single path revealed itself. Okay. So it's kind of, it looks like a and d type of playthrough style where they're going to be telling the story, whoever this thing is, and I'm just kind of here for it, I guess. I already know what some of these symbols mean, so I know this one's going to give me a creature of some type. And this little thing in the corner shows like their faction, I guess, or their tribe. So that's reptile tribe. Cat doesn't have a tribe apparently, but I'm taking the cat because it's the best card, or at least that best, it has the best sigil. But there's reptile, I guess deer, if you want to say it like that. Uh, what else? Bird, insects, and beast. The only reason I'm confused on that is because I feel like the deer and the beast could be the same thing, but wolves aren't in the same faction as a deer card, which we'll see later. Okay, squirrel. That's pretty good. Oh, this is what gives us a bunch of items. So we get squirrels in a jar, which basically just gives us that card, that whatever card is in the jar, card is in the jar. And then, uh, what is, I don't even know what these are called. I guess pliers. And with the pliers, you'll just pull out a tooth. You rip out a tooth and drop it on the scale on their side. So it's essentially like if you pushed your finger down on their side, but only for one life point. Now, sometimes it'll give you like these land cards where or well, i guess it's terrain cards as they said while i was sleeping it was the right play i get it maybe you'll help me nah i guess the stout is supposedly hitting but all these terrain cards they don't move or anything so i just have to kill them or leave them in the way it kind of depends more so on, on what i want to do but the first thing to get put down is going to be this cat and that's because with the sigil that the cat has, it lets it be um, used as sacrifice indefinitely. So now on my next turn, I'm gonna take a squirrel and use that thing's sigil and the squirrel to spawn this snap ran so I don't have to kill my stout and don't have to worry about it at all. 
and this cat is going to be protected by the terrain so that's pretty much how i'm going to win the game i'll probably cut through some of the fights some of these earlier ones because they're just tutorials but it's pretty much how it's going to go and it's going to repeat back and forth so i'll bring you back when we get back to the map you prevailed and trekked onward past the bloody terrain let's not do that whole thing but i said i was going to skip it all but yeah whatever Right now in the beginning, there's a lot of stuff that you'll kind of see throughout the game. So I might skip a lot more of it, depending on how important it is. But we'll see what happens. I don't want to take the spare. I actually don't like the flying sigil personally. It do, it's fine. It just doesn't suit my play style because I want like total domination of the board. I don't want them to have anything on the board to attack me back. And the flying creatures don't kill their creatures. So eventually they will just kill my stuff. <clears throat> uh so this is this is the point where it's kind of cool right because you can start mixing the sigils together and i always i always sacrifice this sigil just because i like to see what things evolve into the fledgling sigil the, the stout wants me to pick him but it's also kind of a bitch the stout just plays into the story is the issue well not the issue but just like the thing and why it's talking but so far, I haven't seen why it's important. I know some of its earlier dialogue. Firstly, some of its earlier dialogue just has to be skipped because it goes through too fast. I guess when it gets to some of those points, I'll play it slower. But personally, I probably won't read those out to you. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Now, these, these are pretty cool. We'll get these later in the game. But these totems are, they're game changers overall. And I've only gotten, I've probably gotten about 30 minutes into this game. And talking to some of my coworkers, I know the game's kind of long as fuck. So... I don't know how long this series is going to take and I'll probably end up streaming some of it. Well, I hope to end up streaming some of it is what I'll say because <laughs> trying to want to stream after also working a 40 hour work week at a, it's not high stress, but it's not no stress either job. At least I handle the stress at the job well, but it's still like motivation to do stuff after you stop working. It's difficult. Don't want that. I uh, didn't pay attention to him talking, but I don't know. I feel like I'm going to edit these differently too, or at least I want to. So what this sigil does, or not sigil, but totem does, is it applies that, this sigil to all creatures of that type. So let me see if I can go further forward. So it has a, a wolf's head, which means the canine faction, which is what this coyote is, which I think technically is wrong. I think coyotes might be more related to felines, but who knows? Anyways, it gives this sigil to those factions. So now this bat has, or this coyote has the same sigil as the bat, which can be dangerous, especially when you get like higher level cards that fall into certain categories. Oops. Oh, sorry. I just, I guess that took too long. I didn't expect a, <laughs> a fully single player game to have like hurry up mechanics type thing. But I think I want to take out, shit, it doesn't really matter which one I take out first. I'll take out the bat first. Actually, I should have. No, it doesn't matter in this case. Yeah, it still doesn't matter. Pretty much the same thing I explained. So right now it's just the same. And you see the, hang on. I'm gonna try and say too much at once. Right now it's pretty much like I have to kill these and out damage them, but I think I'll be fine because both of them are gonna die in one turn. And as you saw the stout's ability went off. So now it has two damage and five health instead of one in three i think it's original cards are but i can't remember I'll drop the squirrel get the snapper out here and put it in defense so it should be able to no, not even should be it's gonna kill that coyote and the battle die as well so now i'm pretty cool is that a wolf cub okay the wolf cub mm, the wolf cub's gonna take out my cat so maybe i can get a no okay i also want to potentially get a one strength card quite honestly the damage is going to be better than uh that defense especially in a spot that's not going to take damage and this will give us five damage this turn which is going to swing it all the way back onto his side i mean at this point i'm kind of set to win the match so i'll bring you back when it's over to be honest with you, I probably just lost like all momentum for this video because my, my siblings called me. So I just talked to them for a minute since I really only talk to them about once a month unless we're physically in front of each other. Impressive, you may survive this ordeal. This is just a tutorial, my guy. You don't have to be talking. I thought wood. 
Wow, you think I need luck to beat you? Well, let me calm down because I don't know how hard this game gets, but at least up to the angler, I blew through all of this shit. So right now, just knowing what we've seen, knowing what I've seen and knowing what I know, the skunk will not be good as good because it deals no damage. So it's going to weaken something, but it's not going to actually stop it. So the most it could do is make it to where it itself isn't receiving as much damage or completely nullify an attacker which actually with the early game right now is actually pretty good so i'm going to take it usually i would take the bullfrog to defend from flyers because that would be our bigger issue uh i think i've shown this already so let's check out the campfire it's a little bit it's it's an interesting story around the campfire you know we came across a small group of survivors everybody wants to gather around the campfire sing their little songs and everything help out each other Faces shrunken from starvation, they huddled around a campfire. They looked upon your group of creatures and beckoned. I'm going to be a creature around a campfire. I'm wondering about the fire that will hit this power. I'm just suspicious of them because I feel like they might try and eat a creature based on them being so like gaunt and skinny, I guess. But I do want to upgrade the cat because although the cat is like my main like oh you're just out there to let me bring out more creatures if it could deal damage that would be good too if the cat is in my hand it's going down no matter what give me my fucking cat back get out of here with your gnashing teeth and shit let's get into the next fight and see what we get going so it's kind of a setup to lose it feels like at this point i definitely know there's a way you can win it because it seems like at every point there is no like guaranteed you will lose this one but there are ones like we're gonna beat the shit out of you and you might win like it's not impossible but it's gonna be difficult your first time i think that's just it's trying to teach you stuff basically get up from the table fetch the candles from atop the barrel there are quite a few secrets around the map i don't really know much about them like don't know how to set that don't know what this picture frame is for I do know this should be like 271. Uh, it's not what I was expecting to get. To be honest, I was going for 271. Not 273, whatever I got. But, okay. I don't like how gross his hands ever look. Now sit, sit back, back down. down. I don't think he needs to be this pushy. Let me explain something to you. Okay. That was one of your two mistakes you can make it here. If you make another, you must sacrifice. I must I sacrifice think you. Got now, where were we? A little aggressive there for no reason. So. Fucking. I haven't used a, a, this. This one gives me new equipment, which are these three. I haven't used any of them, so I'm going to go this way because I can benefit from all of these things. And that one pack is going to give me nothing. Raven isn't a bad flying car because of its damage and health. It's pretty much higher or on par with the skink. And especially with how easy it is for us to get blood creatures out right now. Or sacrifice creatures right now with the uh, cat. This is actually pretty helpful. Oops, I didn't mean to click through all that. I What I'm trying to do is set myself up to, to read them and edit. But <laughs> I keep clicking through them pretty fast sometimes. Now the river snapper with two damage is going to be far better than the river snapper with one because that's significant damage. Two damage is about the baseline is for most characters or most cards. So it, and, and some of them cards, some of the cards have like three attack that can deal back to you, but two damage is going to one shot a lot of cards and six, six health is going to let it take a lot of damage too. So that's going to be pretty good overall. I feel like, so let's see if we can beat the prospector in one go this time. The trees seemed to close in around you as a chill wind approached. In the distance, you could hear the sound of clinking metal on stone. Obbled figures stood in your path. E halts. What's the prospector? <laughs> Mule's the key, which I did already know. You have the cat starting out, so that's pretty good. gonna be able to take that one hit i believe it's gonna be able to take that one hit it's gonna deal two damage back so it's gonna carry over actually and hit that uh coyote behind it or at least it should if it actually activated that effect like it should at the beginning so we'll actually have to check and see on that right now and i'll bring in a squirrel 
so I can get down my river snapper. Turn up my own volume. So hopefully that's not super loud right now. This one's a little bit more complicated because this mule disability sprinter at the end of the owner's turn, a card bearing the sigil will move in the direction inscribed on the sigil. So it does flip direction. It's not always going to be to the left. It kind of just bounces back and forth from the sides. So that's what I mean by I was going to kill the coyote behind it. And that way too, it's not like that's why the teeth, the extra teeth drop out too. So if you deal overkill damage, fuck, I'm going to lose all of these cards in a second. But if you deal over, if you do overkill damage, <laughs> excuse me, and there's no cards there, there's no cards behind it. That's why the extra teeth fall in. And that's how you gain the teeth are the currency in this game. Shit. I would have loved to kill that fucking uh, mule first because now this bitch is going to break all of my cards. And I was hoping that the cat, I could at least save the cat, but now I can't. And it also blocked all of my things. So I have to wait for these to die before I can deal any damage back. So hopefully whatever he puts out, how much damage to, no, there's nothing right now. I'm gonna use both of my scrolls right now. That way, whatever I pull next, I'll be able to put down as well. Because this dog is gonna start breaking stuff, basically. I got two wolves, but fuck, I can't put down two squirrels yet either. So I'm gonna have to take a hit from this uh, dog. So I can grab, fuck, I still can't actually put anything down. I'm hoping for something with one strength so I can actually put it down. But at least at this point, I can just start dropping squirrels in front of it. That way it won't deal any damage to me at least. Skunk will decrease its damage by one, so that's not bad. And this will keep me safe from whatever is gonna hit me next too. It's not gonna deal enough damage to kill me this turn either. Actually, not gonna deal enough damage to kill me in three turns because the skunk weakens it. Fuck, because if I attack over that creature, it won't die. So I can't put the raven in front of it, but that's kind of what I need to put there. But I'll get a dog out instead. Ah, because I think what I have, no, because I can't let that hit me either. I'm kind of in a shitty spot right now, to be honest. Because I can't get rid of either of those. But it's going to deal three damage. And if I kill that, the dog's going to move over there to defend on the next turn. So that's actually not bad. Almost died, though. Did almost die. Let's get a tooth out there, too, just because. Why not? Just to have a little bit more health. Oh, I'm no bitch. I won't lose a game just because. Got to tie it back up. We are about to kill the mule this turn, so that's gonna give us a bunch of cards right now, actually. So that's pretty good. The porcupine will be pretty good too. As long as I don't die right now. Yeah, okay. Porcupine down in front of this wolf too. It's gonna be able to take at least one hit. It's gonna die in that hit, but it's still gonna be better than nothing. This wolf is gonna deal damage to give us health back. That wolf's gonna kill. Actually, is this gonna kill? I don't know. We'll see. Cause I don't know how much damage it's gonna take when it uh, when we hit it, or when it hits us. I, I think I meant. I think I meant. That's exactly what I meant. But. Get another skunk down in front of this uh, bull bulldog or bloodhound, I guess. I don't know. That might have been. Yeah, I was going to say that should have been enough to kill that time. So we did. We were to beat the the prospector one turn. So because of that, I might cut out some of the earlier fights because none of those matter if I was able to beat this dude. 
So now we get a special reward, which this is kind of the best part and really what you're kind of looking forward to when you play Inscription. Or at least from what I've noticed, is every time you beat a boss, you get to pick from slightly more powerful, more rare cards too from this deck. So the Ura Yuli, uh, this level of brutish strength needs no explanation. You do need to have four sacrifices, so four blood sacrifices, but seven damage, seven health. It's going to kill pretty much anything it hits. It can take quite a few hits. The Gek is probably a good card to build off of. But it does go down for free and deal one damage. It, in this corner, is usually where you're going to see what the material cost is. So either the Bones, which we'll see later, or Blood, which we see with the most of our cards right now, actually. Or this uh, Ura Yuli. Or Child 13. Poor Abandoned Child. It does not die when sacrificed. But do you have the heart to try? Absolutely. I'm taking this hoe. If I can get this thing down and a fucking cat, both of those things are going to bring out level 2s for free. That's way better than anything i could ask for the sound of the prospect is pickaxe still ring i don't know why i keep reading those i'm reading those but i'm gonna read over those again when i edit just giving the characters different voices and giving our main like dm i guess his own voice too because i have this go xlr i need to give it more of a use than what i have or at least i feel like i need to oh the wetlands that's kind of a lame name i'll be honest just because it's too scientific also, we can't scroll forward and look at our deck. So now we have two cards, the Child 17, which... Honest, can I get a closer look at this card? Because it kind of looks like a rat with wings that didn't fully develop or something like that. Or a rat with, like, wings in the middle of its... Or, like, ears in the middle of its back? I don't know. It's kind of... It's something. Definitely something. Let's get back to the game, though. I do need to refill my equipment, so I'm going to take the middle route this time because I do believe it lets you fill up your equipment every time, not just get one or two. I like the Mantis. River Art is cool. I don't like it because it plays no defense at all. Worst type of basketball player, in my opinion, because I'm, I like playing defense personally. Do you even get any good equipment? A gust from this may lift your creatures into the air if only for a turn. Okay, I'm going to take this one because I know what comes with the, I think the next boss fight. Definitely taking the goat. And do I take another fan? No, I'll take the, the tooth is kind of useless because it can give us one health, but, but it can also end a fight at the last second if we're close, but not going to beat it that time. But I think the squirrel is going to be better for now because we might have a little bit of time before we get to that final boss and actually need anything. Uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. I don't know if I said that at the beginning, but... Here we go into the next fight. We'll see if it's anything significant. If it is, you'll see it, basically. Ooh, wee, this is what I was hoping for. So now that we have the cat and this other creature, what we can do is fucking spiders. Okay. The issue here is going to be that the kingfishers will barrel, barrel, jump underwater uh, on their turns. But actually... Not the worst. This will give us one damage every time. And this will give us two damage every time. And both of these cards can't die. So this is the main reason why I brought these two in. This is going to one shot that beehive, which actually be pretty good. Now, the issue is I'm going to have to deal with this Kingfisher, but I don't know if I took the bullfrog to actually block these flying creatures. We almost killed it in one turn, which isn't bad at all. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take monsters now because I can put out two cards every time no matter what. Or at least one card every time. What the fuck? Nah dog. See, I seen some of the cards change, but I ain't seen shit like this. I guess I was right with the rat with wings thing, because this hoe is standing up now. I, I should have been more suspicious <laughs> of child 13, but dude woke up and got a new ability and its health went up too or its damage went up because it was one one before this card is actually better than i thought it was kind of glad i took it and we got a b wait why did we get a b i thought they were supposed to get a b if we dealt damage to it but damn that that was a good ass i think we have a pretty good deck so far actually who is that the trapper that shouldn't be the trapper that or I did actually barely kill it and didn't realize. Let's see what this bear trap does. Cause I actually can't remember it and it looks like it's not a fight. You were stopped along the way by a trapper looking to liquidate his pelts. Okay, so I was right. This is the trapper. 
There was something uncanny about his appearance, but you were quickly distracted by his ways. Wares. Get a look at my pelts. I have three, right? Okay, one, first one's free, but how much money do I have? I think I only have three tokens. I was hoping to be able to get a wolf pet at least, but another rabbit pet actually isn't bad. So we'll go with the two and step away from the table. Don't know how to get out of here, actually. Y you're leaving already? Yeah. Please consider me pelts. I'm broke, dog. I only got one tooth. I already got two already, too. Thanks. Thanks for your business. They are useless in a fight, which is something I missed reading the first time. Hold up one second. Uh, let's see. There's two kingfishers coming down plus a coyote. Coyote has one health. Does anything deal one damage, though? Just putting the skunk down in front of them. Oh, no, I got to put 13 down in front, actually. You can get a stout out. That's going to deal one damage. So it's going to kill the coyote in one hit and the coyote can't kill it. Uh, can I use this again? I can get the skunk out, which is going to actually reduce that damage by one. So that shouldn't deal any damage. Hmm. I misplayed child 13. Actually, I'm going to put it behind the stump. That way it's not going to down its first turn. Oh, no, no, no. That's going to fly over. That's why I put it there. So I am good. And with that down, we'll take this. So it didn't wake up this turn, so I guess it's at random, which if anything is pretty cool. I like that aspect. We're going to deal one damage to that sparrow before it even comes onto the board, and we're going to deal no damage past that. I'm actually going to take, I'm going to go ahead and use this squirrel to be able to get this wolf down. That way I can win this match a little bit faster and hopefully get some extra teeth out of it too. Yeah, quite a few. That's pretty good. So I can get better pelts if I run into the trapper again. But we are approaching the angler now, which is our, which is our second boss. I already have... Hmm, do I want to re-equip after this? Oh, I want to see what this is because I can't remember it. And I know I never showed it. You encountered a small... Never mind. I did show this. You encountered a small outpost in the woods tended by a mysterious woman. It was the traitor that the old trapper had mentioned. Her pants, I'm reading these like I'm not going to redouble them on my own, I guess. That, at least that's my plan. If I read them, I'm not going to try and redouble over them because that's just disgusting, both editing wise and like, ah, now we're going completely silent and this voice came out of nowhere. I, I'm definitely talking over myself at some point, but <laughs> being someone who's played D&D, &D, the DM definitely just has to talk and get it out there. And if you hear, you do. If you don't, you don't in some situations. So... Who knows? Let's start with your hair pelts. Here's what I can offer. So it goes up in like how strong the are the, I guess the quality of the pelts. I'm gonna take the fucking beaver, and I'm gonna tell you why. With this beaver, with its sig if you add more sigils to the beaver, uh, first of all, the beaver is a dam builder. When a card bearing this sigil is played, a dam is created on each empty adjacent space. A dam is defined as zero power to health. If you put a sigil on the beaver those sigils go to the dams so let's say for example you get the the leap ability on the on the beaver that means the dams are going to have the leap ability which means your dams are going to function as flyer defense so i'm definitely taking the the beaver first and it doesn't change after that another flying creature wouldn't be bad what does the beehive do? Once a card bearing this sigil is struck, a bee is created in your hand. A bee is defined as one power, one health, and airborne. Now, for some reason, when I hit the bee, the beehive last time, the cards came into my hand, which is, excuse me, for some reason, I was going to try and talk to a burp, but, which is weird to me because if it says it goes into your hand when it takes damage, it's kind of giving mixed signals since, wow really said that anyways it's really giving mixed signals because it said one thing but i've hit it before and it gave me the cards myself twice because it was two different cards that hit it as well do i want to re-equip i think so just to make sure i'm going in with the boast i can i don't feel like um, yeah i'll take another one of these just because i feel like that fire pit although it will increase one card it's not going to increase my fighting capabilities overall as much as the equipment would 
at any boss fight. My boss battles are high stakes tests for you. With only one flame, you will either overcome or die. Fear not, I will let you keep the smoke. I'll let you keep the smoke, which is another card, a creature card, basically. A foul smell invading your nostrils and caused your throat to seize. I was about to explain Oaking those, by a those candles, gone, but, with his you feet know, submerged in the dark water. had to interrupt me and just fucking talk he about pulled it. pulled a hook from his pile of dead fish. I'm the angler. That's a Go lame fish. ass tagline, my guy. That's kind of real predictable. Now, I do like the angler's music, though. Okay, okay. We got the red snapper. Or not the red. Well, I'm gonna fuck it. We got the red snapper. Out now. Already. So we'll be able to block against this kingfish and deal damage past it as well. And we'll be able to block six shots from it too. So that's actually pretty good. Now, something with the angler too. I want to be cautious about putting too many cards on the board because when they do, or when it does, it will. Uh, well, you'll see in the second phase, but something too is gonna steal your cards if you don't defend against it properly, basically. And the easiest way to do that is to keep dropping down a squirrel, basically. It's what I'm gonna do to defend against it. Because I know I'm gonna kill it without needing anything else. And once you kill it, though, the issue then becomes that. Too fast. That's not, too that's not what it did the first time that I, uh, that I played this game. So. A little interesting i'm not gonna front didn't expect this at all i can't kill that bear but i will be able to take a hit that won't be able to take a hit from him so i'm gonna be able to use so so i want that to go there Fuck. misplayed um I meant to put that beaver right here so that way Dan went on either side to defend at least one shot from both of those, but I'm thinking we're gonna die here to be honest, y'all. Kind of kind of it already. Alright, alright. See what this does. Uh, so all of my cards are floating. Nice, love it. Okay. Got the wolf with three hits. It's not gonna kill anything and it's gonna die when it hits its turn. So that's lovely. I don't know what that fucking fan shit did either. So that's also great. Love to see it. I'm gonna die this turn basically. <clears throat> Cause I won't kill any of these and that's 12 damage lined up. So unless I was like God or some shit, I'm gonna lose this round. Shoo. And I can't put that down either. So that was actually useless to grab. Well, you know, when the dude pulls up with 12 damage in two rows and each row has six health, it's kind of hard to beat, especially when you can't even fly over and just deal damage that way. But I did misplay on that beaver. So let's see what happens when we actually die. Get your fishy ass hands away from me. Okay, all right. Loving this floor. You aren't dead yet. This isn't purgatory. I don't know what he's standing in though. It looks like he's standing half in, half out the door. Oh, you may think it th if that way. Before you expire, I must ask you a favor. I would like a memento. Memento? Your, Your very, very own, own death, death card. card. It's quite plain and at the moment, isn't it? We will work together to amend that. So I know with the death cards too, so they carry over. So this is my first death card, but let's say three rounds down or like three deaths down. This card can still appear randomly, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, based on what I've seen just from like playing the little bit. Apparently me rubbing my shirt is slightly loud enough to pick up on my mic, but not loud enough to pick up in the recording, I believe. Ooh. Here are some cards you can, from your mediocre deck. Thanks, appreciate it. For the cost, all of these costs the same, so there's really no difference. I'll take the Raven's cost though, because you want it to cost as least as possible while being the best as possible. Power and health, two, three, or three, two. More damage or more health. 
I think first oh I definitely need to put a flash warning on this game. So hopefully my editing self remembers to put this in while I'm saying it. Take like three damage and two health. The other one, if it, it was citrus, I definitely was like uh thirteens. Child thirteens. Taking the cat sigil for sure. Very powerful card. I think it's a little bit underrated based on like the health that the cards <gasps> Excuse me, based on the health that the cards usually come with, so that can be a little bit annoying. For now, I'm just gonna call this card a bad end though. And I'm not sure if that's how I spell it. I should probably be sure. I should be more sure than I am. But in the future, if you guys, well, not if you guys want to, just leave a comment if you wanna name these cards that way they're not all called a bad end or just some random shit that I come up with. Uh, that would help out a lot. Uh, but also, I do only use one B. The proper way of spelling it is with two Bs and one D. But I switched the two. That way I can actually get the name that I wanted. And we'll see what picture it gives us later. But for now, that's going to be all for this video and this little run through. So thanks for watching. And I'll see y'all next time. Are you ready? You do not need to smile.